one that saved us. And not only that saved us, but kept us. That kept us. Kept us by his grace. No mourning. No grieving. No tests. No trials. No sickness. No pain. Everybody will be happy.
My God, Lord, we're not just doing just anything, dear God. My God, we're not just wasting our time, dear God. But, oh, God, Lord, uh, uh, we're living this life, Lord God, because, Lord, we want to, uh, Father God, Lord, be in your favor, dear God. We're living this life, dear God, because, Lord, we know, Lord, it is only, Lord, through this life that we will make heaven our home. And, Father God, we want to be at that place, Lord, where everybody will be happy over there, dear God. My God, we want to partake of that, Lord. We want to be part of that people, dear God. When the saints go marching in, dear God, Father God, we want to be part of that number, dear God. So, Lord, help us, Lord. Help us, dear God, Lord, that as a father we go through this journey here in this life, my God, Lord, we will keep our eyes fixed upon Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. My God, Lord, this afternoon we pray, God, that your anointing would press, uh, rest upon uh, our gospel time, dear God. Uh, Father God, Lord, anoint God. Uh, Father the Speaker, uh, use our brother, Lord, for your glory, dear God. Uh, Father God, take him out of his humanity, dear God. Uh, and my the Holy Ghost show himself, dear God. Uh, reveal himself, dear God. Uh, my God, even in the word of God, uh, my the two witnesses. Rise here today, dear God. Let the two witnesses be here today, dear God. Let the two witnesses, dear God. All the top fire from heaven, dear Lord. My God, Lord, and God, consume all flesh, dear God. Consume carnality. Consume more sin, dear God. My God, make sinners tremble in their seat, dear God. Those, those that, Lord God, that are here, Father God, Lord, even, Lord, through the streaming, dear God, my God, Lord, might they quake in fear, and, Father, come to a realization, my God, Lord, that they need God, we ask in Jesus' name. Father God, Lord, those that are sick and afflicted, those, Lord God, that are, Father, bedridden, dear God, Lord, and, uh, Father God, at home, Lord God, looking at the, uh, 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 broadcast, dear God, Lord, uh, Father, longing to be with the saints, Lord, we pray, God, that you would bless them, touch their bodies, uh, heal for your glory, uh, God, deliver as only you can do, uh, you told us to ask what we will, and it shall be done, God. My God, Lord, we are, we beg you, Lord, because, Lord, we are a begging people, dear God. We need you, Lord. We need you. So, Lord God, just bless and have your way, and we'll give you the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Let's pray for Brother Arnold Sandwich. Amen. Our brother has a burden on his heart on this afternoon. All right. So, let's hold him up, okay? Amen. All right. All uh, right. You, you, you know this cold weather, it, it affects all of us. It affects all of us. It affects the way you think. It affects you physically. And, uh, and, and, and that, that doesn't mean that you don't do that to the preacher. So let, let, let's pray that the Lord heat them up, okay? Heat them up. And Lord, if, if necessary, burn us up. So let's receive our brother with a hearty amen, okay? All right, let's receive him with a hearty amen. Amen. Jesus, he spoke a parable. He spoke it to this man. That men are what? Always to pray. And not to pay. You know what I'm saying? Uh, that, that was something else God took over Friday, too, didn't it? I said, Pastor, I got something I want to teach you. And when we got downstairs, the Holy Ghost said, No, I got something I want to teach you. Right. Y'all step aside. Yeah, yeah. What do do, That's what it does. Amen. We thank God for that. And uh, I thank God, you know, just at home yesterday, Brother Walter, I was just sitting at home, and the Spirit of God just like come in and say, Hey, man, get on your knees. Let's talk. I mean, you don't know, Saints. You, we say stuff like this, but. But we need to, to fight that things like this register. We are living in the last day. Amen. If you're not saved, you better run for your life. You better, listen, I'm reminded of the ark. Listen, it had never rained on the earth. And here's the man talking about, 
It's going to rain. Well, Jesus has never come back before. And we, we are here talking about he's coming back. We are saints. We got to fight the spirit that's out of the world. That's the spirit of unbelief. And that's the title today, the spirit of unbelief. I'm reminded, and Noah's out there preaching the gospel. After all the hell did he preach? How many people got saved? 120 years. Though the number of the children of Israel be as the sand of the sea, the Bible says, only a remnant shall be saved. We got to fight to keep in our mind these are the last of the last days. Because, look, 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 I'm going to show you in the scripture. We have done, the world has been quite successful at kicking God out. Oh, we picked him out of the home, out of here. Out of the schools. The jobs, our jobs, they have policies. You can't bring those types of talks into the office. Kick them out of the businesses. We talk to young people. We go out to, to the uh, places and talk to young people. They don't know about Moses and, and Pharaoh and all that, right? They, we used to, used to be able to take advantage. They don't know about it. They don't kick them out of the jail. So you and I, saints, let's not be all bent and surprised as what's going to happen. Because all we know now is God is kicked out. We have not seen the full result of it yet. That's coming. You know why? God is trying to show mercy. Let's turn to John, the third chapter. God is trying to show mercy and help people out. I'm reminded, brother, of, uh, here's this man Noah, out on some dry land building a boat. What's wrong with you, man? Why are you out here on dry land building a boat? It's going to rain. Hey, Noah. What's that? Right. That's when this boy, this boy, you see this boy here? It's going to fall from the sky. And it won't be on the shores, you know. There won't be a separation. It's going to flood. We don't believe that. Jesus is coming back. We don't believe that. We've already kicked him out. They don't want you to tell your children about the Lord. Everybody has an issue now. There's, there's, there's uh, black issues, white issues, women's issues, girl issues, boy issues. Everybody has issues. Everybody has issues. People don't want the solution. I tell my own family, my own same family. Pray for me. Pray for me. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. That's easy to keep saying. Why don't you get in the condition where you can pray for yourself? You want the blessing. You want to pray the blood of Christ for the bless her. You know he's the answer, which is why you come and ask for prayer. But yet you don't want to do it. God help us that we as saints don't get caught on the way. Jesus is coming back. Just the time, the spirit of unbelief is so strong. I'm telling you, saints, Pastor, I can't leave the thought. I, I could be well, I could be at work. <laughs> the spirit of unbelief, it'll come, bro. It'll, listen, you don't have to do all that. No. Listen, listen, listen. Come on now. <clears throat> Calm down. Don't you see all these big mega churches and all of this stuff? Right. Saints, full of dead men's bones. Full. Full of dead men's bones. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Those of you who want to go out and go and, and leave Zion and go back to all these churches and stuff like that, you go and you, wait a minute, oh man, I, I like being downtown. This is nice. Oh, we can go to a nice place to eat. Not me. I'd rather go to the graveyard. That's what you're doing. You're turning down good meals that'll save your soul. And you say, I'd rather go eat at a dead graveyard. And then just to make it real clear, you cannot be saved. Leaving Zion. Going out. You know it has no foundation. I'm sorry. Your, your, your knowledge is untaken away. And you still be in church. Lord. When you go and see a man's name, founder and pastor, that's his church. And that's what you're doing. And you want to hell with him. Amen. It's not in the Bible. It has no foundation. That's why you have a godly foundation. 
you're going to join up with a heart. You can't be saved. But I don't believe like that anymore. I know the spirit of unbelief is strong. Look, you know how you get caught by the spirit of unbelief, brother? Just disobey. One thing, disobey. Just disobey. I'm going to get to it. God said, he said, look, I have taken the stone and I laid it in the time. Those who mean business and are for real, he said, that, that stone is a blessing. Yeah. Oh, you love the stone. Yeah. Amen. But the ones who disobey, that same stone that was a blessing to me yesterday, is a stone that blocks to me today. Yeah. I don't believe it anymore. Amen. That's because I'm blind. I don't want to live like that anymore. God help us. This thing right here, I've lived long enough to see it work. I've seen, brother, brother Walt, you preached a uh, message long ago, blinded by the light, brother. I, I still think on that. Man, I've lived long enough to see people blinded by the same word. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. God help us. Yes, sir. John 3, number 18. He that believeth on Jesus him is talking. not condemned. The one that said, this is Jesus talking. If you believe on me, you're not condemned. Right. Any questions? The profession of Jesus, and then we go on to the next part of the lesson. The first part of the first part of the woman, if you believe on me, equals not condemned. Yeah. Anybody get the yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, doctor, can you go over that one more time? Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. Yeah. We got that part, right? Yeah. All right, let's keep going. But he that believeth not. Is condemned already. Then he says, let me show you the negative formula. Here you go. If you don't believe, when is condemnation coming? That's immediate. You're condemned already. That's why I say we got to be careful how we talk and what we say. Don't play with the world. Don't go out there saying, well, I did this and I don't feel condemned. If you condemn, you're done. You should be grateful that you're not condemned. But don't measure it by your feelings. Come on. Because he had not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. You see people today, when they have a, a, a public prayer, right? I mean, I'm, I'm listening, brother Jeff. I'm trying to listen to the nuances of all these little things. Yeah. Yeah. People that get together in their little ecumenical yeah. circles yeah. and they yell, yeah. they'll pray, Oh God, in your name. Yeah. They keep it vanilla. Right. That's right. Oh, in the name of the Lord, yeah. keep it vanilla. No, 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 sir. In the name of Jesus. What? What is it? No, no, sir. Uh -uh. No, no, we ain't gonna keep this vanilla. In the name of Jesus. Isn't that what I'm saying? Oh, my Lord, I'm talking. Oh, God, God, do yeah, yeah, I heard that, God, God. Yeah. Then you throw Jesus in there, and they're like, oh, yeah. Sometimes they'll be like, oh, I'm sorry, it's Jesus. I'm not sorry, it's Jesus. Well, there are many ways to get to heaven. Stop letting the spirit of this world lie to you. There's only one way, and that's through Jesus Christ. That's it. That's it. Come on. And this is the condemnation. Well, well, what? What do you mean by condemnation? He said, okay, that's for those who don't understand. Here it is right here. This is the condemnation. What is it? That light is coming to the world. Light, light, we know. People know. Come on now. People know right from wrong. This is why they're taking the time, brother Jose, to say, listen, don't judge. See, they try to break us down a little bit by the Now they, they rode the horse of don't judge. Right? Well, then they ride that horse of don't judge. Because, see, there, if you judge, my wrong will get the light shine on it. Right? So, 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 so. Here is the condemnation right here. We already know what's right and wrong. And, and here's the other fallacy. They tell you don't judge, but guess what? Everybody judges. You like some things and some things you don't like. How is that? Because you judge each other. Everybody judges. Let's read this carefully. And Jesus said, just for those who don't understand, well, what's the condemnation? Here it is. Light is come into the world. Knowledge has come into the world. We know. We know what's right and wrong. We are not dummies. God is fair. In fact, the, 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 the uh, Psalms writer said, Lord, you're, you're going to show.
Charles was right and wrong so that you, as if God needs justification, but the Bible says, for right. that you yeah. will be justified when you judge. Yeah. As if God needs justification. He is the end of all. But he, 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 you know, he worked with us a little bit. Okay, Lord, that you will be justified right. when you judge. Right. Come on. And this is the condemnation that light has come into the world. Yes. And men love darkness. Oh, well, here's the problem. The light is not the problem. The love of darkness is the problem. Right. Right, brother. So everything old is wrong. The way we raise our children is wrong. Come on. Listen, listen. Anything that we used to do and hold to is wrong. Now all of a sudden we're the weird ones. What's wrong with a group of people living holy? What's wrong with a group of people of uh, uh, holy men who won't play with your son? What's wrong with that? What's wrong with a group of people who won't take advantage of your little baby? What's wrong with that? Now they want to diagnose, oh, the head of the No, 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 man, that's the spirit of the devil. And that's why that's why they say really check this out now. That's why they say basically there's no cure for it. You know why? Because they can't touch spirits. They can't deal with spirit. Your psychology and all that. You can't deal with spirit. So they say, we can believe there's no cure. Right. Jesus is the What's the scripture say? But he that doeth 
pray. Do this for you. Because people know. Oh, people know. They know already. So, so it ain't what you know. In fact, what we know, Brother Jason, can dance. But he that doeth the truth, what? Cometh to the light. These are the ones who come to the light. That his deeds may be made manifest. That's what I love about living holy. Yes. Check this out. Amen. Amen. At home, at work. Amen. Amen. Check this out. Amen. Amen. Our lives are open books. Isn't that right, Saints? Amen. Oh, we ain't got no pet sins, no rhyme sins, no Amen. funny Amen. stuff in the corner somewhere. I travel all over all this world for a living, and uh, brother, listen, they know. Some know, oh, the other countries, bro, I'm a preacher. Some of them know, bro, because I had to put my testimony out there. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. Some have some assumptions that, oh, here's a guy, he, he's by himself in this country, and brother, I will blast you with the, the Holy Ghost and tell you, brother, don't come to me with that foolishness. <laughs> so my co-workers all around, they know. They go, listen, oh, yeah, that's right, Arnold. Okay, they said a different accent, been in the country. Different. Oh, yeah, Arnold, that's not to me. That's right. right. They know, brother, they know. Put your testimony out there. Yeah. They know her. They know my wife. You know what I'm saying, Brother Jeff? Oh, they know my wife. They know I'm married. Y'all get what I'm saying? Brother, if you, you, know, you can't be used of God being a hypocrite. Amen. Our deeds are manifest. They open. Check us out. Amen. Come on. That they are wrought in God. That they are deeds are work. They are sticks and set in God. They are worked through God. We got that saints? Yes. Amen. Thank the Lord. All right, let's get into it. Second Thessalonians 2. Thessalonians. You all pray for me. Second Thessalonians 2, verse 10, please. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish. See, see, there's deceivableness and unrighteousness in those who are going to perish. I'm going to deal with something here, saints. There's, a, there's this thing in the religious world, and I want to deal specifically with these so-called churches. All right. All right, that's good. That there is no hell. Yes, that's good. I just have a simple question. Simple question to ask the Sunday school this morning. It's a simple question. How is it that these churches have gone through the Bible, got rid of the references for hell, but yet keep the references for heaven? How do you do that? How do you do that? And then the people just swallow it. Oh, good. That means I can continue to do my wrong. Jesus said, listen, you're making them twofold more the child of hell than yourself. What we're experiencing here, saying, what we, you and I are living, this thing is more serious than a heart attack. You know why I said that? Heart attack can just kill you, your body. But fooling with this can kill your body and get your soul in there. This is not a game. Amen. Right. Lord, help us. All the sinfulness and unrighteousness in them that perish, what? Because they be received not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. This is the problem with people. You witness in the people. Some people will even agree with you. You're right. Yeah, man, what you're saying is right. Yeah, what you're saying is right. And then, but they won't receive it. They'll, they'll come up with little uh, cop-outs. Pray for me. Yeah, you can be praying for me. Okay, wait a minute, wait, wait, wait. We know this Friday night. He said, Jesus said, man don't always to pray. That's pray. Okay, wait. Don't don't be telling me that in vain now. Pray for me. Alright. Because right. when we pray, right. God is coming. Right. All right. consequences of prayer. Right. Right. None of this stuff is life. None of it is life. Right. You want us to pray for you? Then when God comes to you, you better do what he said. Because yeah. don't we believe in our prayers? Yeah. Don't we believe God will answer? So we're not playing a miss. We're not just playing around here. My God. Say, you and I, we have, we have an awesome, a, 
absolute serious position in God. We have two faces. Is that right? We're ambassadors. You all with me? We represent God to people. Isn't that right? Then you turn around with priests. We represent the people of God. Man, we, we don't have time to play. Jesus help us. That's why when we're by ourselves, my God, I'm an ambassador. Lord, help me to live. Help me to represent you. And then people need prayer. They need help. So Lord, help me as a priest, Lord, to help watch before I enter. Because if you enter in the presence of God incorrectly, that may cost your life. But people don't believe. The spirit don't believe. The spirit don't believe. It's just like, oh, it don't take God. It's, oh, he's just so loved. Oh, I have to worry about all of that. Huh. You, you, you cutting people off and having bad attitudes and all this stuff, and just going to go to God boldly? Talking about demanding God to answer your prayer? Saints, Jesus, help us. What have we done? We lost our minds. Lord, help us. Verse 11 says what? And for this cause. Lord, since this people are doing this for this cause. God shall send them strong. But. See, it's one thing. I remind, I just don't forget these, these little lessons. From, from Pastor Gordon, they, somebody was possessed with devils. Oh, yeah. And the saints were praying. They were praying. And Pastor Gordon came, he was praying. And the Spirit of God said, get up, get up. I did this. I, listen, the Spirit of God said, get up. I did this. Stop praying for him. Oh, God. Is a, he said, stop praying for them. I did this. Have you never read the scripture that an evil spirit from the Lord? Have you never read that scripture? Unbelief. Unbelief is killing people. God will send them a strong delusion. What? That they should believe a lot. People, you know why these churches are so packed? Because people rather keep their dark deeds unchecked, be religious, and hope they somehow get to heaven. You're not going, you're not going. I'm telling you right now, you commit willful sin, you're not going. But we actually know this. We actually know this. Which is why they know, the religious world know exactly where to attack to tear down the truth. But people actually know this already. But you know what's happened? You know why they're so comfortable? Perhaps it's God that sent them a strong delusion. Now they believe a lot and there's nothing you can do or say to uncheck it. Jesus help us. Lord, I've been praying. I've been fasting, Lord. God's like, no, 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 no. I'm done. They are now fit for judgment. But unbelievers say no. No. Mm -mm. Unbelievers say no. God is not. See, God is so loving and, and all this and uh, yeah, yeah, you know, you know. That's why Pastor, look, 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 look. Husband and wife, right? You can have issues. Right? Disagreements. Let me show you how to disagree as a husband and wife. Disagree and have an argument. Argument is opposing side. I didn't say go off. God don't allow us to do that. In a way that if somebody calls you for prayer, you can say, hold on, honey. Let me pick up the phone and let's pray. In agreement. What? You can argue like that? That's how you better argue. That's how you better disagree. Such that at any time I can pick that phone up, my wife and I, we're going to be right in the throes of it. Hey, I don't see it. I don't see it. I don't see it. Hey, Sister Tanya, Brother Arnold, I need prayer. No problem, honey. Let's hold hands. Come on, Amen. 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 Jesus, help us. This thing is not a game, brother. It's not a game. This is not a game. Holiness is not a game. Holiness is not a game. They're trying to change the definition. 
definition of what holiness is. Amen. Church of God folks trying to change the definition of what holiness is. It's still sin freeness. What we know to do right, brother, Jesus is still holding us accountable for it. You can get on Facebook, brother, and try to tear it down point by point by point. You're still guilty. You're still responsible. Let God, I was going that next, on the screen. Let God be judged. So what if something don't believe? That's in there. Romans 3. I don't know if we're going to get to it, bro. But let's start over with Romans 3. Let me finish this. Let me see if there's anything else I got to do over here, brother. Bro. My God, in the name of Jesus, Lord. Let me just see verse 12. Then there, verse 12 says what? They'll believe a lie. Then verse 12 says what? That they all might be. See, who believe not the truth. What? That they all might be damned. Who believe not the truth. That's what happens to me. Damnation is still real. My God, the people don't believe it anymore. That's how these churches are all out of control. But Romans, brother, let's go to Romans here. Let's start at verse chapter 2, actually. Let's start at verse 20, uh, 28 and read down. Do you remember when they wrote when they wrote these original scriptures? They had numbers and stuff, right? Chapter. They did that for us. So these things continue. These thoughts continue. 2 and 28. What does it say? For he is not a Jew, which is one outward. Neither is that circumcision, which is our in the flesh. So some of us are not actual natural Jews. Isn't that right? But we're spiritual Jews. Isn't that right? I should say, most of us, right in here. <laughs> right? But what? But he is a Jew. Yes. Read that again, my sister. Much every way, yeah. chiefly because that unto them were committed the oracles of God. I want to get that. God talked directly to them. And guess what happened to them? They became directly responsible. And when they disobeyed, they became directly guilty. Woo, thank God we're, we're Gentiles fashion and we're not under. That's why he took time to tell us we're Jews. And the same thing, the same disobedience that, and the results of that disobedience is waiting for us who disobey the truth. If I had time, brother, I'd take you over to the natural branch that was cut out. That's, only, that's, that's part four or five or something like that. Okay? What advantage? Much every way, because God talked directly to them. Do you remember when God talked directly to them? They said, Moses, we like you, but let's hear from God. He said, okay, sanctify yourself. Then he said, okay, God is going to talk. Then God came down, boom, and talked. They said, Moses, we don't want to hear from you no more, man. Whatever God tells you to do, you tell us. And they said, Moses said, okay. And then you know what they did? They promptly disobeyed. But disobedient, but the unbelief pastor says God won't cut me off. He took the time to tell us we're Jews. That's right. To show us the same thing that happened to them will happen to us. If I had time, I'd go over that. Verse 3 says what? For what is not okay, believe? What a thing. What? I did. What if some of them don't believe? What? Shall, shall their unbelief make the faith Sister of God? I don't believe that anymore. I don't believe I have to dress modest anymore. I believe I can wear my rings and my makeup now. I don't believe that I need to hold it tight like that. I don't think there's anything wrong with drinking now. I don't see it the way you used to see it now. I used to see it, but I don't feel that way. So what if they don't believe anymore? Do you think that would make the faith of God a non event? It affects God not at all. Jesus help us. But unbelief says, I'm still okay. This is why people still hold their religious professions. But they go back out to the world, start doing the things that they were doing, and they know it's wrong. This is why they're careful at first. Something, you, you, people are trying to, they test the waters first, they do a little bit first. They go, well, I'm, I'm just going to do it this way. Little bit first. Because the Holy Ghost is talking to them, saying, you know better. So a 
I'm five, I'm like, well, I'm just going to do a little bit of I get used to that. Now I'm going to go a little bit more. I get used to that. The Holy Ghost is like, don't do it. Don't do it. At some point here, I'm going to send you a, a strong delusion. And you'll believe that you're saved. And there's nothing anybody can tell you to turn you around. Jesus, unbelievers, killing people. Killing people. We don't believe, Pastor, when you're preaching to us about our homes. Husband and wife, working together. That's why I can still go on my wife's neck with no problem. She can come in mine with no problem. Brother, the spirit of unbelief is still telling me I'm still good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, sir. Yes, sir. All I have time to do is set this up. I might as well call it part one because... I have gotten to no results. I've gotten to no results. Verse, <laughs> verse 3 and 4 says what? God forbid. God forbid. Yeah, let God be true. 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 Every one of us, every last one of us trying to do it our own way is a liar. That's right. Hey, it doesn't matter what title. You're right, brother. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Well, I'm right. Baptist. Well, I'm Catholic. I'm whatever. I'm Church of God. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Do it our way, bro. It doesn't matter. God said every last one of them, everybody, everybody doing it that way is a lie. Amen. There is no other man but by Jesus Christ. That's right. Nobody, nobody can, can save people. Nobody can represent uh, salvation on this earth but Jesus. Nobody. Nobody. Every man is a liar. And the, and the ones who are not, who are saved, you're only saved by God's grace. That's right. So, so that takes the big eye and little you's away. That takes that away. You're right, brother. That's good. Brother, we're, we're all just saved. Ain't none of us good enough, smart enough, wise enough, strong enough to live this life on our own. It's too much, brother. It's too many practices. Cracks. It's too many places. And the Spirit of God is the only way we can navigate this salvation. Listen, come in, I don't want you sitting here. Why go? I don't know. No, I don't want you to use the next step right here. You use this one. Okay, look. You don't even know why. And then you find out later. You say, listen, this is why. Because there was sin there waiting for you. You don't even know. Can't you live this life on your own? No, you can't take this job. Yes, that's why he said in all your ways acknowledge me. Because he'll say, no, no, for you, you can't take this job. But Lord, I saw her take this job, but I'm talking to you. Then the Bible said he knows our frame. I know your frame. You can't take the job. Why? Because it'll take your heart from me. You don't know. You don't know. My, 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 my. Okay, well, <laughs> let's do one more set of scripture and I'll stop there at verse 9 4. <laughs> because we have not gotten to the results of it. I'm still up here. I haven't gotten down there. We don't have time. But the results of it is blindness, it's quite devastating. Yeah. This is stuff that you and I are experiencing right now. And if without the Holy Ghost, brother, we cannot have discernment to what's happening, how it's falling apart. It's falling apart right in front of us, and only the saints can have this discernment to see that it's falling apart. And that's why we build our hopes on things eternal, not on things of this earth. Four and one says what? Be loved. Believe not every oh, spirit. Oh, but to go around believing every spirit. Right. Pastor Deuce prayed something like he was praying for him. He said, Lord, let both witnesses who arise. You need the word and the spirit. Right. Come on. But try the spirits, whether they are of God. Let us Amen. try and put them on trial. How can you put the spirits on trial? You use the word of God to put them on trial. Wait a minute. This thing is not supported, said, or found in the Bible. You can call it. That's a false spirit. Amen. That's a false spirit telling me I can treat my wife any kind of way. And still be saved. That's a false spirit. Unbelief said, believe in that. Unbelief, unbelief will tell me to believe 
have faith in that, right? Amen. Amen. Jesus, help us. Saints of God, holiness is under attack. He don't want us living right. Because the devil believes he actually is a believer. And he travels. And he knows he has a short time. And he's trying to take every last one of us to hell with him. Jesus, help us. My God, help us. But try the spirits whether they be of God. Because there are many false prophets going out into the world. They're telling people you can do whatever you want to do. And still be all right with God. You know these services out here in these churches. That's why they have all that noise. No, 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 no. no. That's tingling and that nothing for the soul. People come out. That was a good service. And then you challenge it. What made it good? Tell me what you got out of it. Oh, man, we were shouting and bawling all over the place. Okay, but what did it do for your soul? My God. That's right. We raised offering five times. Good sir. Verse 2 says what? Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. Here's how you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of Every God. Every spirit that said Jesus Christ has come in the flesh to condemn sin, bro, that spirit you can count. Didn't Jesus come and show us how to do it, Saints? Yeah, sure. Yeah, in the flesh. But verse 3 says what? And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not is of not God. Of God. What? And this is that spirit. This of is that spirit that of Antichrist is not a person. It's a spirit. It's not a person. Get your eyes off the Middle East. That's false. This is spirit. And it's ruling this world and wearing the people out. It's the spirit of Antichrist, where of what? Ye have you heard that he's going to come. And even now already, he Let me tell you, it's already here working. This is why the way of holiness is so talked about negatively. Because there's a spirit in the world of Antichrist. Amen. They look at us and say, you're a fool to raise your children that way. They look at us and say, hey, listen here, man. What do you mean the man is the head of the home? What do you mean? This is the right thing. Now, brother, N-O-W. Yes, that's good. Yes, that's good. They got men looking at as foolish as ever. Yes. You're right. Yes. You're right. You're right. Yes. You listen to us commercials, man. Honey, oh, yeah. I mean, did you did you take that? Oh, duh, 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 the pigeon of the swan. Yes. And the swan all the way over to the support of our girls, which we should support. How hold it, hold it. But it's anti support for young men. Yes. That's the problem. Yes. Yes. Oh, they're, they're rejoicing. They're rejoicing. This is the first year on record where more women are in medical school than men. Okay. We're we going to keep. Adding to the equation. One day God is going to hit the equal side. And when you see a negative number come out, when you see the negative side come out first, uh oh, what did we do? No, it's too late now. I haven't got to the result. God help me. We have done something here. And it's too late to turn it back. Brother, the Titanic has struck. There's the iceberg right there, and it's too big. And it's too late. They're turning around. Those who are saved, I'm telling you, hold on with all your might. Those who are not saved, and the Spirit of God is talking to you, you better run. They told Noah that there's no such thing as rain. And then one day, drip. Yes, sir. What's that, drip? Oh, my goodness. That's that stuff he was talking about. And they went running. That shall be even in that's in the chief. When you shall see yourself, you're not a And now you're not. See, right now, God is trying to knock at our doors. Let me in, let me in. That's going to switch. When you shall see yourself outside knocking. If you're not saved, I'm telling you 
right now. You better run if God is talking to you. You better run if God is talking to you. He said, you already heard that Antichrist is coming. What do you mean Antichrist? Everything that God set up, you can open the Bible and check out the laws, the new laws of today. Open the Bible, check out the movements of today. Open the Bible and just look. You will see Antichrist, the spirit of Antichrist, saints of God, has taken over this country and the world. The only hope we have is Jesus. I, Lord willing, will get to part two at some point, and we'll get to the result. See, see, here's the problem. The results are coming, but here's the problem, Sister Corinthians, with the results. They're so great, truly, we're not willing to pay for these results. We just don't know it yet. God bless you. Amen. We hope you have enjoyed Gospel Time today. If we can be of any help, please let us know by writing to The Church of God at 4601 South Drexel Boulevard, Chicago, Illinois, 60653, or phone 773-548-7133. If you would like to visit with us, our order of services is as follows. Sunday morning Bible school at 9.15 a.m. Sunday morning worship service at 11 o'clock a.m. Sunday night worship service at 5 p.m. Tuesday night worship service at 7 p.m. Prayer service on Thursday at 12 noon. And Friday night Bible class at 7 p.m. Visit our website and like us on Facebook at Church of God of Chicago.com. Also, join us live on Periscope at C-O-G-O-C, Gospel Time. As we bring this message to a close, we would like to leave this scripture from the Word of God with you. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 23. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. Our musician for today has been our pianist, Sister Norman Horton. Your reader and announcer has been Sister Alex Allen. May God bless and keep you. Let's stand. The brother has spoken of something that we've heard for years. And that is about the spirit of unbelief. Sometimes I stop and I talk to the Lord about what we're seeing in our world today, particularly in our country, and it just it scares me. You can see that unbelief has swept the land. I said swept the land. Unbelief has swept the religious world. And unbelief has swept in what we know as the church of God. I said what, 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 what we call the church of God. The spirit of unbelief. And you know, I, I'm mighty afraid we don't believe in spirits anymore. You know, we've gotten so caught up in the technology of this world and, and what doctors say and all that, that we, we don't believe in spirits anymore. But you know, the Bible, it, it tells us that uh, 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 spirits, they, they, they believe. D demons believe. Devils believe. And not only do they believe it, I'm mighty afraid this, this message didn't shake anybody. Well, no. How many, how, who, who trembled? Who trembled? But people will hear a message like this and they'll walk out and do what they want to do. They, they won't tremble. And if they do, the spirit of unbelief has so grabbed them, they do 
you just like the devils. But you know, there was uh, an event is spoken there in Chronicles and I believe in Kings where God had called the heavenly host together. And he was on, they were on the left and on the right. And while the heavenly host was there, God there in the center and the heavenly host was on his left and right. Devils came up. See, but see, God had gotten to a point where he 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 was he was tired of an individual. Talked about homes and how uh, 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 
married couples I have. And, and, and listen, people that are professing to be saved have having have homes. Come on. The brother brought it up. And those spirits, let me do it. Let me do it. I'll deceive them. And, and, and another one step up. Yeah, yeah, because in the midst of it, I want to mess up their children too. Let me, let me, let me please. about let, it, let God be true in every man a liar. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's just a general statement because listen, God's going to be true no matter what you say. But what, what, what is he talking about? Let him or allow him to be true in your life. Because you can resist him and not let it happen. Let him be true in your life. In yours. And nobody tries. You may be seated. in a corner. It's trying to push us in a corner and make us shut our mouths. Mm -hmm. 